Happy New Year, Oasis family. Can you believe that it is already 2021? It just seems like yesterday things were shutting down. There was fear of the unknown and lots of uncertainty. But one thing is for sure, as we head into this new year, we invite you to join us as we reimagine the possibilities for an incredible year. You know, it has been hard. Things have been challenging, but that is in the past. And we are taking last year and we are learning from it. We are growing and we are coming together to really bring positivity to our lives, our families, and our community. One of those things that we have been able to do around here is unite the city center and the church. And we are reimagining how together we are going to ignite hope for our communities, ignite hope for your families, and you are invited to join us.
Good morning, Oasis family. Welcome. Welcome to the new year. It is 2021. Can you believe it? I know that you're like cheering. This was probably the most exciting New Year's you have ever had, ever. We're saying goodbye to 2020 and we're welcoming 2021. I love when the new year comes around. I, I love all the different seasons and the holidays, but I, I really love the new year. I, I love what it symbolizes that something new can begin and there's a freshness that can happen in our lives. I love a new year. So I wonder, what are you what are you dreaming up for yourself for this new year? You know, we're starting a new series today called Reimagine, and we're going to start to to see what God wants to dream up for our lives. Maybe you've got some dreams that you you thought were from God, but you haven't seen anything happen, and so you've just kind of let them lie dormant, and you've kind of forgot about it. Maybe you felt like you didn't have what it takes to see those dreams come to pass. Well, this series is going to stir up your faith to believe God to reimagine some things in your life. I love Isaiah chapter 55 verse 11. It says, my word that goes forth from my mouth, it shall not return to me void, but it will accomplish what I please and it will prosper in the thing for which I sent it. God loves to make promises and then fulfill them. These are called prophecies. God declares something and eventually God will accomplish it. Whatever God declares, he is going to accomplish it. You can rest assured that if God promised it, it's going to happen. It may not happen how you expect it to or in the time frame that you think, but it will come to pass. Uh, Jeremiah 29, it's a favorite verse around here, 29 11. It says, for I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord. They're plans to prosper you and not to harm you, to give you a hope and a bright future. So God's word never returns without accomplishing what it was sent out to do. So when God says that he has a plan for you, he means that he's got a plan for you. And so whatever those dreams that God has put in your heart, those are God's plans for you. Remember in Hebrews where the scripture tells us that the word of God is alive and it's active. It's sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates to dividing the soul and the spirit, the joints and the marrow, and it judges the thoughts and the attitudes of the heart. So when you begin to read the word of God, you are activating something to happen in your life. It's not just reading a word and it just, it just lays there. When you read God's word, it is active and it's alive and it activates things in your life. And so as God begins to birth things in your heart and dreams start to come into your heart and you think, is this from God? Well, if it lines up with God's word, it is. If somebody comes to you and they say, hey, I've got a word from God for you and it has nothing to do with God's word, that's not God. God will always speak and he will always complement with his word. So when someone brings you a thought that they say is from the Lord, if it lines up with God's word, receive it. If it doesn't line up with God's word, just kind of nod and smile and say, thank you. But it always should line up with God's word. You know, God's words and his declarations, they're always on target. The only thing that can hinder God's promises coming to pass in your life would be you. It's your free will. God gave us a free will to, to do what we choose to do. We can accept God's promises or we can reject God's promises. But a word from God is like a river. It's like a, a rushing river. It's not going to stop. It's going to continue to flow. You can try to divert it, but you can't stop God's word from flowing. It's going to settle where it is received. God's word is always going to find that path to flow through. It won't stop until it finds the person to flow through. So my prayer for you today is that it's going to be you, that God's word is going to flow through you. And those dreams that he has put in your heart and those desires that maybe they lie really, really deep because maybe you think you don't deserve those things to come to pass or maybe you think you've done too much stuff for God to ever use you or maybe you think you're just not worthy. I want you to know this morning that God has plans for you and there are plans to prosper you. There are plans to give you a bright, future, full of hope and full of joy and full of peace and full of prosperity. So as we enter into 2021, let's say goodbye to 2020. Let's welcome this new year. Let's embrace all that God wants to do as we begin to reimagine what God wants to do with our lives this year. i
Great are you, Lord, and greatly to be praised. Praise be to God. You've made it through 2020. Let's just take a moment this morning and let's give praise to our God. Great are you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that the men and women that are watching this service today, they're strong. They're well able. They've overcome the last year's pandemic. They've overcome the last year's turmoil and trials and tribulations. And God, you've set for them a new day, a new beginning 
beginning, a fresh start for them to reimagine what life can be like, totally committed to the Most High God. Father, thank you that your ways are good and they're not our ways, that you have thoughts that are greater, far above everything that we can imagine. So Lord, thank you that we can stand today and be able to say, thank you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. Just take a moment this morning and give God praise. Wherever you're watching today, maybe you're watching at work, let your coworkers think you've lost it. But you know what? You're just thankful you made it through a new year. You've come through the fire, through the flood, through the storm, and you've come out on the other side. And God says, I've got a new beginning for you. Hallelujah. Aren't you glad? Come on, on those social platforms, give those praise hands if you're thankful that a new year has begun. Well, I'm certainly thankful a new year has begun. I know you are as well. I'm waiting. I thought I was going to wake up in 2021 with a new hair. I was believing God for it. I'm like, God, give me a new hair piece. But I thought, I don't want to buy it. I got to have it supernaturally put on. But it hasn't happened yet. But maybe in heaven, my new hair will be there. But as of now, I'm still good looking. And so are you. I'm honored you've joined us today. Can you believe 2020 has finally ended? And now we have a new year. I want you to go with me this morning to the book of Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20, because the world has hit the reset button. A world that has experienced a worldwide pandemic has now called for a reboot and a reset. What the world is looking for, my friends, is a one world order, a new world order. They want to restructure the foundation. They want to redo America. They want to take away what our founding fathers fought and died and bled for. And they want to reboot a system and start it over again and put their policies, their ways. But I don't want you to think in those terms this morning. I want you to take 2021 with me and take it to Ephesians 3.20. And I want you to reimagine. I want you to reimagine not wiping the slate clean, if you will, not rebooting the system, meaning you lost all things of the past. I'm not saying that at all. You need to know what God has done before he'll do again. What he's done in the past, the miracles he's done in the past, he'll do them in 2021. Read with me Ephesians 3, 20. It says, now unto him who is able to do immeasurably more than all that we ask or imagine, according to his power that works within us. Let me just tell you today, miracles still happen. You don't have to travel across the country to go to a miracle crusade. When you pray in faith in Jesus' name, miracles begin to happen if you will trust the Lord and begin to reimagine what life could be like when you put your hand in the hand of Almighty God. Father, I thank you today for the wonderful opportunity to enter into this new year with faith, with hope, and with optimism, trusting you to reimagine our lives, what it looks like to be totally 100% committed to you, your way and your will. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Aren't you glad it's a new year? Come on, I'm just, I feel some of you out there saying, Joey, thank God I made it. You know what? You're strong and you have made it. This is a new year. And I wanted to start off this new year with this message series that God put on our hearts about reimagine. Like I shared with you, the world is talking about a reboot and a, and a reset button. In other words, the world wants to have a new world order, a system where everybody, thinks alike, talks alike, acts alike, one world currency, one world order, if you will, one global economy, one global person and things. But I'm telling you today that God doesn't want to reboot. He doesn't want to reset. He wants you to reimagine to reimagine what it would be like to live a life in full compliance with God's will and God's way. Many of you are watching me right now and you need a miracle. You need a miracle in your life. You need a miracle in your home. You need a miracle in your health. And I want you to understand it's God's will for you to receive that miracle, but you've got to reimagine. Many times we start the year off and we start to make New Year's resolutions. How many of you ever made those resolutions? Only they tell us that last maybe two weeks. So we're not gonna make New Year's resolutions, we're gonna reimagine. 
We're gonna reimagine what life would be like by listening to God's voice, reading his word and obeying that word, reimagining what it must be like to live in the hand of almighty God, trusting that God knows far more than I and he will make a way where there seems to be no other way. You know, this Bible is a miracle digest. You have to realize that. So I always, I never take New Year's and I make resolutions because I know I can't keep them. I just start to make declarations and I ask God and I make myself a, a prayer declaration of what I'm believing God for this next year. And I'll do that for this year as well. I'll ask the Holy Spirit what, what I need to believe for in 2021. And I encourage you to do that as well. What are you believing for? Maybe you need to take time of a special fasting and prayer as you begin this new year. But I want you to understand the Bible is a miracle digest. In the beginning, the Bible says God created the heavens and the earth. We didn't start because we were evolved like Charles Darwin tried to teach and, and universities tried to keep on teaching it. That's nonsense. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. That's a miracle. He picked up a handful of dust. He breathed into that hand, the Ruach, the breath of God, the Holy Spirit breathed life into that handful of dirt and man became a living soul. Like I said, we didn't evolve here, come from monkeys. It's like the professor you know once once he was a monkey hanging on a tree now he's a professor with a PhD that's nonsense I don't have enough faith to believe that I was a tadpole wiggling in water for a billion years and I developed legs and I crawled out of the water and then I hung on a tree with my legs and I developed a tail and then I hung by my tail and then I evolved and I became a Neanderthal and then now I became a human being I don't have faith enough to believe that I don't know about you but in the beginning I have to know it was God who created the heavens and the earth. It was God who breathed life into man and man became a living soul. What a miracle our God truly is. And our God is a God of miracles. He divided the Red Sea for Moses and millions of people walked across dry ground bound for the promised land. What a miracle. The three Hebrew children were thrown into the fiery furnace and there appeared to them the fourth man in the fire. We know that fourth man who he is. His name is Jesus. He was there in the beginning in Genesis 1. He was there as the fourth man in the fire. He's there the last night you prayed and you asked God to strengthen you as Tears fell down your cheeks. He is there through the darkest night. He is there through the lowest valley. Our God is there. The Bible says the fourth man showed up and they didn't have to bend. They didn't have to bow. They didn't have to burn. They imagined what it would be like to trust God. And guess what? They imagined and God showed up and showed his power. What a wonderful opportunity it is to reimagine life when you put your hand in the hand of God and experience miracles. The virgin birth was a miracle. God being born through the womb of that virgin in Bethlehem's manger. What a miracle. The ministry of Jesus is truly a miracle ministry. In John, the second chapter, verse 23, it says, quote, now when Jesus was in Jerusalem, many believed in his name. What name is that? The name that's above every name. So you have to reimagine life in 2021 by making his name authority in everything, by trusting God that his name is above all other names, that at his name, every knee is going to bow. Every tongue is going to confess that he is the Lord to the glory of God. God the Father. The Bible says many in Jerusalem believed in his name when they saw the miracles that he did. Get that very clearly. The multitudes followed Jesus because of the miracles, not his teachings. There were a lot of rabbis back then teaching great profound things. But what was different when the supernatural Jesus came on the scene, all the other things had to go away. But the supernatural Jesus changed from every rabbi that was there in those days. Jesus was performing miracles. When he turned the water into wine, they applauded. They thought it was miraculous. What's the point? As long as Jesus did the miracles, they applauded. But then one day he looked at his crowd that had gathered and he asked them the question, I want you to do something for me. I want you to lead a crucified life. What he was asking the crowd in effect, I, I know you know the miracles. You know that I can do miracles. 
But now I want you to reimagine a life that's committed to me. A life that's separated apart. And I want you to live a crucified life. I want you to deny yourself, take up your cross and follow me. You know what the crowd did? The, they, they folded up their lawn chairs. They, they poured out their iced tea. The, they, they, they scattered like debris in a tornado. The point is they were following Jesus only for the miracles. They were only following after him because he was performing miracles. And God wants us to go deeper than just following after manifestations. He wants us to take this new year and imagine what life would be like truly committed to him, his word, his way. We're not chasing after miracles. We're following after our father and we're trusting him to make that way. We're trusting him. We're not seeking his hand. We're seeking his face in 2021. We're wanting to reimagine what life is like totally dependent upon Abba, totally dependent upon our father. We don't want to be a crisis Christian. We certainly don't want to be circus Christians coming after the, the miracles and not following after Messiah. We want to be committed Christians, not people that come after sensation, not people that come after those things and not sacrificing unto him, not people that are just looking for hype but not living a holy life. God wants you and I to spend this new year reimagining what life would be like living holy, being separated from this world, separated from the things of this world and live in life in a place of holiness, trusting in him, reimagining what life would be like, literally taking everything before him. See, some of you have never been told that, that how about asking him before you do anything? How about getting up every morning and thanking him that there was breath in your lungs, thanking him that you have competence in your mind, your thought, your hands are moving, your feet are moving, you're able to breathe, you're able to have thought because of him. Reimagining what life would be like completely to totally, uh, completely totally committed to him. Emotion has to have devotion. So in other words, you don't take the new year on and just, and just have a lot of emotion. 2020, a lot of emotions were everywhere. They were all over the charts. People were like an emotional roller coaster, up one day and down the next. But how about reimagining life, not driven by your emotion, but driven by devotion, making a way where God says, I will prepare that way when you're trusting him, when to move, when to speak, when to do things. Jesus is looking for then and now to committed Christians. I think this new year, you and I need to reimagine life as totally committed to him. Not people who are attracted to the rah, rah, sis, boom, ba, but people that are attracted to him, that want to know what father says, that want to know what's in this book, that want to know what those miracles really represent. What are those miracles really about? You know, it's been quoted and said, when the eye is right, it responds to light. When the ear is right, it responds to sound. But when the heart is right, it responds to Jesus. In our hearts, as we reimagine what life would be like this next year, our hearts need to respond to him. Our hearts need to respond to him. Open up your heart this next year and learn to respond to him. Do you know Jesus' first miracle when he was on this earth? You would think if he was going to perform a miracle, his first miracle would be raising up of the dead. Or perhaps maybe the first miracle that Jesus would perform would be maybe returning sight to the blind or re restoring a withered hand. You know what Jesus' first miracle was? Turning water into wine. He was wanting you and I to know as we reimagine our life, trusting in him, being totally devoted to him, that he can transform our lives. It's the miracle of transformation that God wants to transform our lives. Reimagine your life today transformed by the supernatural power of God. Jesus Christ was and is in the transformation business. He can transform useless water into priceless wine. He can transform useless lives into trophies of God's amazing grace. He can transform a desert of 2020 from pandemic to lockdown to suffering to trials and 
tribulations into an oasis of living water that would never run dry. He can take your life that has been twisted up by sin and bad decisions and make it a thing of beauty. Though your sin was like scarlet, he can make it as white as snow. Your life can be transformed because he can take care of depression. He can transform your life and take care of depression. You need to reimagine what life is like, not living in depression, not living in anxiety. He gives joy that's unspeakable and peace that surpasses understanding. He can take chaos and confusion and transform it into perfect tranquility. He can transform a dark night into a golden, miraculous day. Do you know this morning in closing, he can transform personalities? You know, nobody's probably ever told you that in ministry, but Jesus Christ can transform your personality and to make you not only likable, but attractive to the presence and things of God. See, some of you need to realize that the closer we get to Jesus, the more attractive we get to the presence and things of God. He transforms personalities. He transformed a blustery fisherman. His name was Simon. The word, the name Simon literally means unstable. It was the fisherman on the water. His name was unstable. He came from a long line of fishermen and his life was unstable as the water which he fished upon. And Jesus came along and reimagined Simon's life no longer as being, as being unstable, but changed him from an, in, an, 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 an unstable stable person to a rock of stability named Peter. He's went from an unstable person, water wavering to a person of stability. And Jesus said, upon you, Peter, that confession, you will be the rock that will build the foundation of the church. Peter, who cursed three times, denying Christ before an 18 year old girl saying, I don't know the man, transforming that personality from being unstable and wishy washy to a man who went from three failures to 3000 converts and started the supernatural crusade that led many, many millions to Christ. What started it? Jesus transforming his life. You and I have the same opportunity today to let our Jesus transform our lives. He transformed John, who was so capable of such an anger issue, hot temper, that the New Testament called him the son of thunder. What's the point? Christ transformed him into the apostle of love. <laughs> the one whom Jesus loved. Jesus found a greedy tax collector named Matthew and he reimagined Matthew's life and transformed him into a cheerful giver. Now, I don't know about you, but when you can transform an IRS agent into a cheerful giver, you are a miracle working God. <laughs> it's true. He found a demon possessed woman named Mary and he made her the first messenger of the resurrection. He transformed an intellectual monster named Saul who was a Pharisee of Pharisees killing Christians because they didn't have the theological foundation that he had. And he transformed him to one of the greatest missionaries the world has ever known. Jesus Christ is in the transformation business. He can transform the drug addict, no matter if you've been battling with heroin, oxycontin, methamphetamines, fentanyl, no matter what your addiction, street drug or prescription drug, Jesus Christ can set you free. He set my daddy free many years of addiction and in one service, one service, he didn't make him a remodel, he made him a new model. He became a brand new person in Jesus. He transformed him from a drug addict to a man of God. Who in the world can do that? Only the one who holds the world, Jesus. Jesus, he can do that. Is your marriage struggling? He can transform it. Are your finances battling things because there's not enough? He can transform it. Why don't you reimagine your life trusting God? Start tithing and offering. Start the year off right. You say, well, I didn't do that before. Maybe that's what you got, what you got because you didn't do that before. Maybe you need to reimagine your life being committed to God. Start it with your finances. He can transform your sick body. You're watching today. 
And maybe you brought sickness into this new year, but God wants you to reimagine life without being sick in body, being pain free in your body, living a, a troubled free body. In other words, letting your body be submitted to Christ, letting sickness and disease being given over to him, not given over to Blue Shield or Kaiser Permanente, thrive. There's no thriving in that. All God wants you and I to do is reimagine a life that's truly committed to him. So what I tell you, saints of God, stop whining about how 2020 was so bad. Don't whine about all the junk you went through. Don't you dare rehearse the bitter pains of the past. This is a new year. This is a new day. This is a new beginning. It's time for you to reimagine your foot on the neck of the devil. It's time for you to reimagine a life full of health, strength, prosperity, and the anointing of God. It's time for you and I to reimagine what life is like, trusting Abba every step of the way. It's time for you and I to realize we're not, we're not reconfigured into some type of new thing. We are new beings in Christ the Lord. We are new entities and the victory is ours. The victory is ours. Listen, nature forms us. Sin deforms us. Education informs us. Penitentiaries reform us. But Jesus Christ, the Son of God, he transforms us. You need to reimagine your life being transformed. He doesn't make a new old you. That's not how it works. He takes the old you, he crucifies it, he puts it on the cross, and he makes you a brand new entity, a brand new creature. You're not a remodel. You are a new model. You are a brand new supernatural entity in Jesus' name. So friends, it's time for you to take this new year on and reimagine it. Reimagine what it would be like completely debt-free. Reimagine what it will be like living pain-free. You say, well, Joey, that's all. You're just trying to get my hopes up. You can't have faith until you first have hope. It's time for you to reimagine life with your family being together in harmony and in unity. It's time for you to reimagine life as being committed to the local church, not just coming and going like you used to do, but really being committed to the local church. The church needs you and you need the church. It's time for you to reimagine life as being the head and not the tail. It's time for you to start reimagining life, to live in a supernatural victory, discerning the body of the Lord, discerning the blood of the Lord, discern, discerning the ways of the Lord, discerning what it means to talk to people, not to talk to people, where to go, where not to go, what to look upon, what to avoid looking upon, what to speak upon, and what avoiding to speak upon, what political affiliation should I encounter, and what should I avoid, how should I live, how shall I give, what shall I do? You all begins with reimagining life completely submitted to God. Father, I just thank you today as we get into this new year. We don't, we don't have to wonder what you're going to do. We don't have to just kind of overwhelming our senses. We can just reimagine what life is like truly committed to you. 100% submitted to the things of God. That's what you're after. Total commitment. Total, complete commitment and surrender. Can we just take a moment and surrender? This first of the year, first Sunday of the year, come on, let's do it together. We just surrender to you, O oh Lord. We surrender your will, your way. We reimagine our life completely surrendered to you. What is it in your life that needs to be surrendered? What is it that you need to leave in that old year and not bring into this new one? What is it that you have to let go so you can let God? What is it that you need to reimagine? The Bible says unto him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we can ask or imagine. Some of you don't imagine because you don't ask. God says it's time for you to start asking so you can truly imagine. Hallelujah. One thing I desire only this I seek is to dwell, dwell, dwell here forever. This
Jesus will be my pastor, laying at your feet, is to dwell, dwell, dwell here forever. Dearest Father, closest friend, most beautiful. Most beautiful, dearest father, closest friend, most beautiful, most beautiful. One thing I desire, only this I see, father, is to dwell, dwell. Forever with you, this will be my posture, laying at your feet, is to dwell, dwell, dwell here forever. Dearest Father, closest friend, most beautiful. Most beautiful, dearest father, closest friend, most beautiful, most beautiful. How beautiful are those whose feet are shod with the gospel of peace. How beautiful are those who are committed and surrendered to our Father and His ways. The world in which we live in, friends, in 2021, they're looking for a reset and a reboot to bring forth their secularism of utopia, of a one world government, a one world order, and a one world system. And what I'm declaring over you today, for those who have an ear, let them hear. I'm declaring over you today a reimagining, a father who loves you so much that he would rather die than live without you, that he came to this earth and gave gifts unto men, and those gifts that he have given are without repentance, and he wants you to reimagine a life that's completely surrendered to him, to reimagine a life that you are absolute in authority, everything you say and everything you do, that you live above only and not beneath, that you live your life as being ahead and not behind as a tail. You live your life as a person that is blessed and highly favored, a person that is healthy and strong, body, soul, spirit, and mind, a person that lives life under the anointing and canopy of favor under the umbrella of God's authority. You would reimagine yourself living a life of robust health, living a life of absolute freedom, a family life that's absolutely complementary to one another, that you live life favoring and living a life honoring one another. What must that life be like? Just imagine. Just imagine what that life is like. God says in my word you can have it. You can have everything the book says you can have. You can live as I declare you can live. And thus saith the Lord, in 2021, my people shall live an above life. They shall live a life of strength, prosperity, and anointing. They shall live a life of absolute freedom, health, and wholeness. And they shall live a life of prosperity uh, given unto him. Thank you for that, Lord. We receive it in Jesus' name. You receive that today over your health, over your home, over your business, over your children. 2021, reimagine life committed completely over to him. Let's say this in closing. Father, come on, say it with me. Father, I submit my life completely over to you. Help me to reimagine my life committed to you and you alone. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, we're so honored you've joined us today. I want you to know that God wants you to reimagine a life of abundance and overwhelming favor like you've never known prior. Amen. We love you. Have a great rest of the day.